Hi guys, Dane here, and today we are going to be filming, I think it's episode 4 of my Cat Picks My TBR, so I'll link below to a playlist where you can watch the previous videos. Basically, I put some treats on some books, I get Biggie, my cat, to come and help me to decide what books I'm going to read next, and then later on this video I'll hand over to future Dane, who will then let you know what he thought of these books. So without further ado, over to Biggie. Hey cat, do you mind coming out the window and giving me a hand? Would that be okay? Oh, that's your bum. Gross, Mingin. Oh my god, they exploded everywhere. Biggie, oh my god, the cat is here. He's gonna eat his fill before we even get started. <laughs> I was just about to apologize for how messy my floor was as well, which is kind of ironic, because now it's even worse, isn't it, Biggs? At least you're helping me to clean up though, eh? So, our first choice of three books, we have Hercule Poirot's Christmas by Agatha Christie. Read it in June, why not? Alien by Alan Dean Foster, and Amsterdam by Ian McEwan. Okay. Go on then, go and get that one. I keep him busy while I load the bases. All right then, Biggs, can pick one. Which one are we going for? You missed them. You missed them, didn't you? You came up to the camera again. Which one are you gonna go for? You've gone for Alien by Alan Dean Foster. Okay, thank you very much. Good boy. Okay, so next up we have Bullseye, 20 short stories by Yasutaka Tsutsui. We have Everything's Eventual by Stephen King. And we have Porno by Irvin Welsh. So, another one over there. Yes, I know, the camera's very nice. But there are treats on these books. Look. You just kicked one onto the floor. What have we got down here? Okay, that'll do. We're going for Porno by Irvin Welsh. Thank you, Biggie. So now we have Inferno by Dan Brown, Insomnia by Stephen King, and World War Z by Max Brooks. Although I believe Americans say it World War Z, don't they, Biggie? Which one are we going for then? Oh. Ah, oh, he picked Inferno by Dan Brown. It's about time, because that's been on this list about three times. All right, thank you, Cat. Enjoy the rest of your treats. Okay, that was a success. So as you saw, the cat picked three books for me, and those are Alien by Alan Dean Foster, Porno by Irvin Welsh, and Inferno by Dan Brown. So this will be my reading over the next couple of weeks, I guess, and I will see you in the future for reviews of each of these. Okay, so I have read uh, Alien by Alan Dean Foster, so let me start by giving you the blurb. Nostromo. With a crew of seven and a cargo of two billion tons of fossil fuels, the deep space tug crawled across the outer reaches of the galaxy. Whilst the computer guided the ship, the humans slept, until the Nostromo scanners picked up a garbled distress call from a remote and long dead planet. And all the technology of the future could not shield them from the nightmare of today, for on the planet something stirred. Alien. Once aboard their vast and labyrinthine craft, it killed to live, and lived to kill. And then down here we have, in space, no one can hear you scream. I wasn't sure whether I was going to get too into this to begin with for the first chapter or two. Now, don't get me wrong, I've seen the movie and, you know, I like the movie uh, probably just as much as the average person, I suppose. I have read Alan Dean Foster in the past. I've read Midworld, which is Todd the Librarian's favourite book. Fun fact for you there. And basically for the first little maybe 20 pages of this not a huge amount was happening and there was lots of like really quite intense sci-fi slang you know so there were bits where it was literally like plug in the acx through the rnu relay via the auxiliary on the mpj and i'm just reading it being like please please stop doing that uh, but after a while, we obviously get into the story. It does very faithfully follow the movie. There were like a few bits that I think were different. For example, I think in the movie, the ship was um, like transporting like metal ore, whereas I think in this it was uh, like unrefined gas. And that was kind of the idea behind it, is that humanity used all of the natural gas and petroleum, and so we have to send ships into space to mine the, you know, mine the gas for us. And that's also why at the end there is a massive explosion because there's obviously a, the, the ship self-destructs but it's also carrying gas as opposed to what in the film was just like ore. 
So, uh, so that was kind of cool. I also thought in this the uh, scene with the like the chest burster. So after you, you get the face hugger like this, and then you get the chest burster, which is the one that's like. <laughs> A chest burster, when that comes in this, that happens to the guy called Kane, and uh, which is my cousin's name. We have rhyming names. And it was just really well written. It was clear that like Alan Dean Foster is a master of the craft, and he's thought these things really, really through. Like He's not just watching the movie and just writing down what he sees. So, for example, he wrote about the stench, and how it's because the aliens like came out through the bowels, and so the bowels are perforated, so you've got this horrible kind of... Uh, almost uh, like sep uh, septic tank kind of stench from it and yeah there was just some really great bits of description some character building some world building that I don't think was in the film so I actually think I preferred the book to the movie I did watch the movie like straight afterwards as well another thing is that one of the characters was black and I don't think it's ever mentioned in the book but I think that's good because it doesn't need to be I don't know maybe it was mentioned once or twice or something like that but um yeah, I watched the movie and was like, oh, okay, I didn't know you were black. Yeah, really good book though, definitely enjoyed this one. I gave this one a pretty solid 4.25 out of 5 and it may make it into my best books of the quarter. And uh, I would recommend it, especially if you're a sci-fi fan or you're a fan of the Alien franchise. So yeah, cool. Alright, I'll try and keep this one relatively short and sweet. I finished reading Inferno by Dan Brown, so I shall read you the blurb. Florence. Harvard symbologist Robert Langdon awakes in a hospital bed with no recollection of where he is or how he got there, nor can he explain the origin of the macabre object that is found hidden in his belongings. A threat to his life will propel him and a young doctor, Sienna Brooks, into a breakneck chase across the city. Only Langdon's knowledge of the hidden passageways and ancient secrets that lie behind its historic facade can save them from the clutches of their unknown pursuers. With only a few lines from Dante's Inferno to guide them, they must decipher a sequence of codes buried deep within some of the Renaissance's most celebrated artworks to find the answers to a puzzle which may or may not help them save the world from a terrifying threat. So, if you've read Dan Brown before, you pretty much know what to expect here. This is number four in the Robert Langdon series. There is apparently a movie of it that I haven't seen. And yeah, this one is very sort of typical to the genre of, uh, you know, he's, he's the uh, Harvard symbologist flying around the world to solve this ancient series of riddles. So we have uh, a Vasari painting, uh, a, a depiction of, uh, a lot of depictions of Dante's Inferno. So this mysterious object he has is basically like a laser pointer that puts this painting up, but bits of it have changed. And that's how he starts this, this, this long journey whilst evading the police being helped by a pretty woman. I mean, it's basically every Dan Brown novel. Uh, it was all right though. I think, um, it helped that I read this, like I was reading this like 25 pages at a time at night before bed, so that kind of helped. It also helped that I've read and enjoyed Dante's Inferno slash The Divine Comedy, like all three parts of it really come into it. Uh, they also, near the end, they end up in Istanbul, and I've visited Istanbul, although it was for a drunken work weekend, so I, I don't remember that much of it. But yeah, uh, I thought the ending of it was quite interesting as well, I don't want to spoil what it is here, but it's uh, certainly an interesting ending. I think... Uh, I don't know, and there are these like moral questions, so basically the idea is, is uh, you know, we're overpopulating the earth at an alarming rate, and this sort of mad scientist comes up with a virus that uh, he's going to unleash on the world, basically, a bit like how the Black Death worked, where it thinned out the population of the planet, you know, and uh, so I don't want to go into too much detail about what that virus is, but this is what they're kind of trying to hunt down throughout uh, but it, it does raise some interesting moral questions about what should we do about the overpopulation of the Earth. Like, does this does this sort of madman bad guy have a point? Uh, especially with the ending that happens in this as well. It, it does make you think, which I thought was pretty cool. So uh, definitely I think the second half of this was a lot stronger than the first half. I also didn't like the gimmick with the sort of this amnesia he has, so he can't really remember where, like how he got to where he is and stuff. And it is revealed throughout the book, but it's just like it doesn't need to be there. Or it kind of does, I guess, because... It has to, then it adds the suspense because he ends up having to resolve clues he's already solved and stuff. And like he sort of sees himself on CCTV doing stuff that he doesn't remember. But yeah, it was alright. It's reasonably well written. I mean, what can you say? It's a Dan Brown novel. So I gave it like a 3.5 a three point five out of 5, but only because of that ending. Otherwise, it was going to be a 3.25. So yeah, got that one down. And now I'm going to go and read my, my Irvin Welsh. Okay, so 
my bad, I've dropped the ball a little bit. It's been a while since I last filmed an update for this, you know, my cat uh, picks my TBR video. That's because I was left with Porno by Irvin Welsh. And this has like super tiny print. It's also written in quite a lot of Scottish dialect. Not all of it. There are like different sections, basically different sections of the book follow different characters. And you see from their viewpoint. So certain characters use Scottish dialects, others don't. But even when you're reading from the point of a view of a character who like speaks in regular English, they might still use Scottish dialect for the dialogue of the other characters. So it means it was quite slow going. I, I probably took me like six weeks to read this. I also found out that my version of this is like 485 pages. And the actual, on Goodreads it says 600 pages. So no wonder the print was so small, you know. And uh, also just with various other things, a few buddy reads with a few bedtime books and whatnot. This kind of hasn't been a priority of late, but over the last couple of weeks, I picked it up and sort of barreled through the last half of it. Basically, this is the last book in the Mark Renton series. So before this, we have Train Spotting, uh, which you know everyone's familiar with, with with the movie. This is basically what becomes T2, the movie, you know. And in it, a sick boy decides he's going to make a porn film, and he gets some of his like cronies to help out. Renton comes back from Amsterdam to help finance it. Juice Terry is in it, and then he breaks his penis as well. <laughs> and then uh, Begbie's in it as well, and Begbie has a like a long grudge. Basically, Renton stole some money from him years ago, and so Begbie wants to track him down and beat beat him to a pulp. Now he's out of jail, you know. So. Yeah, I, th I really enjoyed this. I mean, again, I'm glad that I took it slowly. In fact, one of the benefits of reading it, like, 25 pages at a time, was that it kind of progressed in real time, so it felt as though what I was reading about was really happening, almost. I have seen the movie before, but I don't really remember it that well, and, I, I mean, I think from what I do remember, because bits of it would come back to me from reading the book, and I do enjoy the book better. The only difference is that in the movies, I find it easier to keep track of who's who. But uh, overall, yeah, I was very impressed by this. And it's definitely a must read for you if you're a Nervin Welsh fan and if you enjoyed Train Spotting. I wouldn't necessarily say that those are the best of his books to start with, though. I mean, my personal favourite is Marabou Stalk Nightmares. But he also has, like, The Acid House is a short story collection that's pretty good. But honestly, he's one of those writers that has like his very distinct, unique style. You can tell when you're reading one of his stories. And I think, uh, you know, that that alone makes any writer worth reading, you know. Uh, it's, it's hard to nail that as a writer. And Welsh does it really well and uses it to reflect his, you know, his background and his upbringing. So, yeah, I gave this a pretty solid four out of five. Did enjoy. Also glad I'm finished, though. And I feel very accomplished having finished it. So that's it for this video. I am going to be back with another My Cat Picks My TBR video. Speaking of my cat, he's just ran off over on the floor over there. Uh, but yeah, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.